morning. Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods. Wake up on this Monday morning hangover, and Lord knows I got a hangover. Mm. I don't know about you guys, but I am hurting this morning. Whew. That loss was a punch to the gut. But before I get to that, shout out to all of you veterans that are out there. And a very heartfelt thank you. Thank you for protecting and keeping all of us safe and protecting freedom giving us the rights for me to be able to sit here and be able to talk to you guys every single day. I salute you guys and thank you again. There's never enough thank you for you guys. <sighs> Fudge. You know, There's a lot of things you can point to in that game for reasons why we lost. I have argued with guys like Vash Lombardi about, as he calls it, the trash can full of dirt. The big guy in the middle that clogs up the middle. But the Cowboys have a philosophy of having guys that can move that are quick. But sometimes you just need a nasty, bad attitude, fat rear end guy who is an immovable force. And that's what happens to the Cowboys last night with Delvin Cook. They could not stop him. That's what happened to us in the playoffs against the Rams. That is our Achilles heel on defense. You can look at our kicking because nobody's talking about that too much, but had Maher made the 54-yard yard field goal, we'd only been down by one point. We could have kicked the field goal and won the game. And that's the same thing that happened in Green Bay. If we'd had that field goal, it would have changed the dynamics of how you called the play. We can look at Zeke being able to, not being able to run the football because Minnesota said we're not going to lose by Zeke Elliott's hands. We'll put it in Dak Prescott's. Dak did everything he could. 397 yards, three TDs, a 102 QBR. The only thing they didn't do with Dak, and I'm still mystified, is why he never used his legs. We can go to coaching because you started out with four minutes left in the game on your six yard line. You start getting into a rhythm, passing the football, and that's all that's been working all night. And for some reason, you decide to take it out of the hot hand that's been keeping you in this game all freaking day and go to your running back. What this reminds me of is the Super Bowl of Seattle versus New England, where Beast Mode have been feasting all day long, and instead of running the ball down in the goal line, you decide to pass and throw an interception. Zeke Elliott was not a factor in this game. Yet, down here in crunch time, you go two runs. You lose yardage. It reminds me of when it's third down and a half a yard, instead of doing a quarterback sneak, which most teams would do, you do a dive, a slow developing play where you're handing the ball off to Zeke Elliott four or five yards behind the line of scrimmage, giving the defense time to react. 
there's plenty of blame to go around with this loss. I, I still do not understand how it is that every single game, with the exception of the Eagles, that we just start out behind. 14 nothing, and have to crawl our way back into games. To me, that is preparation and motivation of players understanding the sense of urgency that we can't wait till the second half to start playing. We can't give the other team a cushion and have to fight an uphill battle that we need to come out the first play and punch people in the nose. I keep hearing D-Law talking about how we're going to do this and how we're going to do that. How about we just go out there and do it? And then we talk about it the next day. That Did you see what D-Law did? He punched him in the mouth and shut him up. I'm disgusted right now with that game. That game hurt. And I know all of the trolls will be out here. And I love it how you freaking Eagle fans come over here and say, yeah, you guys can't beat anybody with a winning record. You know we beat you. So what you're saying is your team sucks as well. Now, this season isn't over by any stretch of the imagination. It just means that you're going to have to win your division. Wild cards now are that much harder because now Minnesota holds a tiebreaker over you. You got Seattle and the Rams. One of those are going to be, I'm sorry, Seattle and the 49ers. One of those is probably going to be a wild card. So that means you're running out of margin for error. You got the Lions, you got the Bears, you got Buffalo, you got New England, you got the Eagles, you got the Redskins, and you got the Rams. Time now is time to put up or shut up. Bottom line. The bottom freaking line. I'm going to go through today. I'm going to look at the game film. And pull out some stuff. So many different reasons why we lost that game. When there should have been so many different reasons why we should have won that game. Detroit without Matthew Stafford, that's an opportunity to get yourself right. The following week, you go to Foxborough and you play New England. The next week, Thanksgiving at home against Buffalo. After that, you play the Bears. You must go three and one. Or better. Or better. And that means you finish up with the Rams, who will be fighting for their lives, as well as the Eagles, who will be fighting for their lives, and the Redskins. It is a tough loss, but it's not over yet. I may be crazy, I may be naive, I may be just plain stupid, but I'm still not ready to give up on this team. But this has to be everybody, from the ball boy to the coaching staff to the secretaries and the owner to all the players on the field that you now have to have a sense of urgency. Because there is, brother... No more room for error. I sat here last year and I said 
about this time that you want playoffs, I said the Dallas Cowboys are in the playoffs. I said because every single week is playoffs. You win, you live to fight for another day. You start losing some more, you're out. And that's the way it was when we went to Philadelphia. It was a playoff game last year. We had to win that to keep our playoff hopes alive. When we played New Orleans, that was a playoff game where we had to keep our hope alive. And each week we played with a sense of urgency. Ended up making the playoffs. And that's where we are right now again. We'll find out what kind of character we got on this team. and What kind of coaching staff. But I am sick and tired of this. Talent wasted on the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I can't find the bottle of Advil. Happy Veterans Day, Bets. I'll see you guys.